Hi, welcome to this, the first video in section 1 of CMM Methodology, a prerequisite to coordinate measuring machine training. The training is split into four sections. This section is called the tools you'll need and contains five individual lessons. In this video, we're going to look at exactly what CMM is and the basic principles of how they work. Measurement envelope. The maximum size the machine will measure, the physical limits of the equipment. What is a CMM? A coordinate measuring machine, CMM, is a measuring device which measures the features of a component, such as holes, slots and planes. It determines their size, location and orientation in three-dimensional 3D space and allows for the comparison of their position in relationship to each other. Collisions between the probe or quill and the component or the fixture are undesirable but do happen. Besides any resultant damage, you have to be careful of knocking the component off the fixture. If the fixture raises a component off the bed of the CMM to allow access to the underside of the component, any such collision may result in fingers or toes being trapped by the falling component or fixture. Hi, welcome to video 2 of section 1, which is called Probes and Calibration. In this video, we're going to discuss probes and their calibration. We'll discuss what calibration is, how it's completed, and what it defines. We'll look at probe compensation and how compensation can cause vector errors. We're going to look at the different types of probe styli and the naming conventions of multi-position probe systems. And finally we'll discuss when and how often probe calibration should be completed. Calibration of the probe tip is normally accomplished by measuring a master sphere. This is a very spherically accurate sphere with a known precise diameter. To complete calibration the operator measures a sphere feature. This captures the position of the master sphere centre point in all three axes, X, Y and Z. With this data, the CMM can then calculate the centre position of the probe tip, and along with the readings from the scales or encoders as mentioned in video 1, give the location of the centre of the probe tip back to the machine's home position. In this video, we're going to look at each of the different types of features and discuss how they are measured. We'll also discuss the difference between 2D and 3D features. We'll look at features measured with a minimal number of hits and explain how this doesn't capture form error. Finally, we'll look at constructed features and common construction methods. Form error. All the descriptions in this video have demonstrated how each feature is measured with a minimum number of hits. Although all the features can be measured this way, the accuracy of the measurement may be compromised. The minimal number of hits doesn't allow for form error to be captured. This may or may not be a problem, depending on the component and the accuracy required. In this video we're going to look at work planes and why they are important when measuring features. We'll also look at the two different naming conventions of work planes. In the three work plane system, the direction the work plane is viewed from has no effect on the outcome of the measurement. For example, the XY work plane is the same if viewed from above or below. This also applies to the other two work planes. In this video, we're going to look at the steps you need to take when measuring features that aren't on the top face of the component, the XY work plane. We'll also look what happens when you don't follow these steps. We'll look at four different methods of measuring features which don't lie on the current work plane. And finally, we'll look at probe selection when measuring these features. Measuring using the incorrect work plane. When measuring, there are two ways the CMM software handles feature measurement. The first is to pre-select the feature type from a menu, i.e. measure circle. The second is to measure the feature without prompting the CMM about which feature type is being measured. 
Once the measurement is complete, the CMM software reviews the hits and determines what type of feature has been measured. Depending on which method is used when programming the CMM, coupled with the incorrect work plane being selected, there are three possible outcomes.